everyone, it's Ali, and today it's time to talk about some updates for the Meteor Zerg to just make it overall better. Over the past few days of being able to play the build, and as we've gone ourselves into empowered monoliths and started pushing into hundreds of corruption, we have realized that there are a few things that can actually make the build substantially tankier, especially in the early game, that I wanted to share with everyone to hopefully make your time a little bit easier. We have actually realized, after playing this build, just due to the nature of how it works, and because mana gain spent as board is such a large portion of our total defensive layer, that when you are sitting at low mana values, transient rest, for example, does not really give you much value, making us sometimes feel very squishy. Because of this, we've actually swapped some things around the build, making it substantially tankier overall, being able to push the build from a constant two to 3,000 board with an early game setup, all the way up to four, five, and even 6,000 board in a normal steady state while clearing echoes, with you being able to push all the way upwards to 8,000 board with very early game gear. Because of all this, you should now feel substantially substantially taking care of while doing your echoes and it should feel a lot better in the 1 to 300 corruption range while you're going around and doing different monoliths trying to get all the uniques that you need to really get this build going in the end game so let's quickly go over all these changes and get you on your way of making your build even tankier than it already was the first thing to mention is going to be the new boots that we're going to be running previously we wanted to get ourselves a pair of transient rests as soon as we can and while these boots were great because they gave us up to 60 percent of our current mana as board the issue with it especially at lower mana values is that that total mana isn't actually that high our Steady state mana is typically going to be around 50% mana or so, and this is only going to get better as I get more mana. When I was sitting at around 600, 700 mana, I would constantly go oom, um, but now that I'm sitting at around 1.2 thousand mana, I'm actually finding myself that I have such a big delay between monsters, especially with wisdom giving me more and more mana regeneration as my mana pool gets bigger, that it's actually very difficult for me to go out of mana in this build unless I specifically spam a lot of meteors at once. And because of this, my transient rests aren't actually really doing much. What we found was that it was actually better to replace your transient rest with a pair of experimental boots that have the word gained per 10 missing mana when you use a traversal skill. This mod actually ends up being just as good as transient rest at around 50% of your mana, with it only actually getting better than transient rest as you push into lower and lower mana values. Because in this build, you're most likely going to be at lower mana values than higher mana values, these boots actually do a lot of work by themselves and you really notice how much more war they give you. A nice thing about these is that because you can use your teleport while you're in Arcane Ascendance, for example, you can use it for a very large burst of board right as your arcane ascendance is ending on a boss. This is really nice because after arcane ascending, you'll be at low mana and you're going to want to sit there and focus. And that just means you're now going to have several thousand more ward during your focus window when you're the most vulnerable because you can't move around to dodge any sort of boss abilities. This isn't really something you need to play around. And even if you just simply get this mod on your booth and just keep playing the game as normal, it will still overall be better than transient rest. But if you do play around with it and do pay attention to your mana and try to teleport as you get to low mana, the value of them is only going to go up and make them better. Because these are going to come from exiled mages specifically, we can't be too picky for the other stats on them. While they are fairly common as a drop, you can't expect to get yourself a perfect four stat pair of these and just settling for either intelligence or movement speed as the other prefix, and then whatever suffixes that are half decent they can get their hands on is going to be more than enough. One thing to mention is that if you attempt to get these with the experimental mod being T6 or T7, that is going to practically be impossible. So realistically, I would just try to find yourself a tier five or tier four roll as soon as you can and just settle for whatever seems decent to you. Even a tier 5 roll is pretty good, as at tier 5, it will roll up to 13 per missing mana, meaning that you're going to be gaining 130% of the mana that you're missing as ward when you use them. To go along with the new boots, we are also going to be getting ourselves a new belt. We have been using Harbinger of Stars for the past few days, and while it's great, Harbinger of Stars really has some issues that kind of make it a little bit clunky to use. I'm sure if you've already gone the belt yourself, you may have noticed the times where it decides just proc 5, 6, 7 times on one pack massively overkilling it and just completely draining all of your mana. Sometimes this is a little bit frustrating and it does get better with a bigger mana pool as it tends to not int all of your mana as much as it will only consume a smaller total portion of your mana when this does happen, but still a little bit of annoying gameplay quirk. And while the up to 18% less damage taken from the mod on it is great, it's not gonna always be active, giving you a non-steady state amount of less damage taken, potentially opening you up to damage spikes. Because of this and because Harbingers is not realistically that important to our build, we are going to be swapping it out for Strand of Souls. Strand of Souls is a belt that literally just says, I don't want to die. This belt is going to give you upwards to 180% of your mana gain spent as board. And we very recently found that this mod is 
absolutely insane for keeping your character alive given just how much mana this build is constantly spending. I played all of day two with a minimum rolled Strand of Souls and as soon as I put it on, I immediately gained over a thousand additional ward at all times. I immediately felt the impact of this build and I spent the large majority of the second day simply trying to hunt down a better roll. When I did end up getting myself a max rolled Strand of Souls, as soon as I put it on, I felt a night and day difference even compared to the min roll version of it and in my opinion, given just how much mana we're spending on this build is the correct play. Farming it is also not too difficult given it's coming from the fall of the outcast boss and while it is a rare item requiring you to most likely kill five six seven of the boss to be able to get it it's a great place to farm given that's where the xp blessing comes from which is a blessing you're going to want to have on every character anyways due to the fact it's going to make you get to level 100 easier and due to the fact that even once you are level 100 it is going to increase the amount of favor that you gain i would highly recommend to go and get this belt especially if you feel a little bit squishy as not only is the additional ward from it great but the the fact that your mana is not going to randomly just deplete out of nowhere actually makes this build unbelievably comfortable and echoes to the point where you basically never even have to press focus. This belt is just amazing. Finally, to sturdy up our defenses, we have a few passive tree changes that we very quickly realize are just substantially better and make the build overall feel a lot more comfier. For focus, we are completely dropping the Burning Aura, Resolute Stance, Prismatic Stance section of the tree, and instead we are repurposing those points, going over to the top left and picking up Mind Shield. This is going to give you upwards to 50% of the mana you gained as ward when you finish channeling focus, giving you a pretty nice burst of focus on top of what you already were having, and honestly, I've kind of liked it a lot more for echoes. For bosses, this doesn't really make that much of a difference because because realistically, if a boss can do some big heavy attack, you're most likely gonna have to stop channeling your focus and dodging it anyways. But for Echoes, where you're most likely having a few monsters attack you while you are channeling your focus, it does feel really nice to either be able to prematurely end it, giving you the ward, or just getting a really big burst at the end of it. Finally, for Teleport, we are going to completely get rid of Elemental Affinity because it's just 50% generic damage, which is such a small amount of additional damage that you really don't feel it. It was the best thing that I could think of to spend on the skill. And while it's nice, we are instead going to be picking up out of body which is going to take nine percent of your health and give it to you as double that amount in ward meaning that every time you use teleport you just gain 18 percent of your health as ward which is actually quite a large amount of ward and then we're gonna combine that with out of mind on the other side giving you one word per intelligence you're gonna have somewhere around 50 to 60 intelligence in your build meaning that this is just 50 to 60 intelligence every time you cast a skill i have personally liked this a little bit more because it just further sturdies up the amount of ward that you're getting every time you're teleporting due to a boot mod and in my opinion it's just felt really really nice with these changes you should have a substantially easier time in the 200 to 300 corruption range and with the amount of additional ward that we're going to be gaining from both the experimental boot mod and the strand of souls this should make this build be able to comfortably farm around 700 to 800 corruption i think this is a pretty good place for the build word builds did actually get nerfed pretty heavily this season we didn't really think it was going to be that big of a deal but after playing this build for two days now we have very much felt the nerf to ward builds and given that now ward builds are overall weaker i do think 700 to 800 corruption is a pretty good spot for them to be in which is not really that much far off of the 1000 corruption standard that i set for most builds that i played overall i hope you kitty is in nerdy changes i'm really happy that they're really easy to make changes that actually provide a very noticeable immediate increase into your build and i hope this just further makes it so you enjoy the build even more and that you continue to have fun if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment in the comments below i'd be more than happy to help you as soon as i can i also stream on twitch every single day so feel free to come by twitch and ask your question there and i'd be more than happy to help you as soon as i can or if you simply just want to come hang out with all the kitties and be a part of my community, I'd be more than happy to see you there as well. With all I said, I hope you kitties enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you all in the next video.